Madison, who is the Vice President of Marketing at BitTorrent at the World Creator Summit. So hi, Matt, and thanks for joining me. How's it going? It's going well. Thanks for having me. Great. So, uh, you know, first of all, I want to start talking about uh, BitTorrent's uh, efforts in the past, you know, uh, couple of years to really become a partner of creators. So you've, uh, you've tried to fight the image that the creative industries had of BitTorrent as a company that uh, promoted piracy and the associations that came with that. And so where are you in this road to become a partner of the creative, in creative industries and where do you want to get? Yeah, it's a good question. And, you know, it's interesting because if you lo actually look at the history of BitTorrent, the company, um, BitTorrent's always been a partner of the creative industries and BitTorrent has never, ever endorsed piracy. I mean, if you, if you go back, BitTorrent's been one of the largest licensees of Hollywood content in, in the world other than Netflix. Um, in, in terms of where we're at today, um, we're working with all of the major record labels. We're talking to all of the studios about how we can help them and how the BitTorrent protocol and the existing BitTorrent ecosystem can both be used to add value to the, the business of creating a sustainable future for content. Yeah, yeah. And one of the initiatives that you know has been talked about recently has been that of the BitTorrent bundles. Uh, so it's something that you launched that allows creators to uh, present a, a bundle of different types of media. It can be anything really, and uh, you know part of that is uh, gated so that uh, the artist or the creator can add any sort of level of un unlocking level. So it can be an email, it can be a payment, it can be whatever they they choose essentially. And this started with the, the artist Cascade, uh, with in partnership with the label Ultra, uh, and so. I wanted to ask you, uh, we're almost a month after the release of this bundle. Do you have any uh, figures or, or sort of perspectives on, on how this, uh, this uh, first experiment has, has been going? Yeah, I mean, overall the experiment's gone extraordinarily well. Um, some of the guys from Ultra are meeting with some of the guys from BitTorrent in San Francisco today to sort of go over the sort of month's results. And we're going to be releasing those really, really shortly. But it, in a nutshell, it, it went really, really well. And, and the one thing we've seen sort of over and over again with these experiments is that our users are, are real fans and they will reward creators for, for their efforts. It, it's just been a matter of figuring out, well, how do, we, how do we make a solution that works for both consumers and producers that, that uses the BitTorrent protocol? And that, that's the thing that's taken a long time to figure out. But it feels, like we're, it feels like we're getting there. It's still very much in the experimental stage. We're not going to have the full publishing platform for anybody to make a bundle out until end of this year. Um, but the early early experiments and the early prototypes have, have been very encouraging. You know, we're learning as we go, and it's been a, a real a real honor and pleasure to work with artists like Cascade. So you know, we've got huge fan bases, so we can really you know road test the concept. Absolutely. And do you plan on taking this as a campaign by campaign basis project, and then maybe eventually opening up to the, to to a wider base? Yes, exactly. So so what we're doing over the course of the next nine months is testing different types of gates inside the bundle just to see what works what's the best thing to do, What what's going to work for a DJ like Cascade, what's going to work for a band, what's going to work for a filmmaker, an author, how can we how can we experiment? And, and we're always surprised by what artists want to do and, and how they think about monetizing their work and how sometimes th they think about just releasing work to, in, to encourage some kind of social action. That's something we're seeing as well. Some of the, the, the world's most famous artists have reached out to us in recent months, just said, I want to use a bundle just to get people to do something nice for each other or to, to make some art with me. Like We never saw those kind of things coming when we, we really sat down to design the bundle. So it's I think it's going to be interesting as a way to monetize and leverage value from, from your content, which is obviously the, the big problem. But I think you know one thing that's been said often, I think Clay Shirky said it, is the most interesting thing about technology isn't the technology, it's what people do with it next. And I'm really excited to see kind of the, the cultural value that bundles create when you you give artists the power to decide what a store should look like and essentially that's a bundle is essentially a store baked into a piece of content that the artist controls so we're really excited about it's not about what we're going to do with these bundles it's about what the rest of the world will do with them yeah. and uh, one of the aspects of BitTorrent that's quite interesting is the fact that it, it's actually a potential mean to really slash costs of distribution of, of digital content and uh, uh, but uh, the majority of of course content creators uh, even if they do a free a free campaign or anything like that they still choose to go with the with the different providers that perhaps cost them quite a bit of money uh, as well so uh, what what do you think you can do as a company to promote the way in which uh, artists can use BitTorrent uh, as a distribution mean and because uh, it almost feels like right now it's still a little bit difficult 
Okay. To understand how you go about seeding something like that for somebody that is uh, mm. not uh, really versed in, in in that area, and so you're working towards more sort of front front end yeah. solutions for artists. Yeah, I mean, if you look at our products, I mean, they they're not the easiest things in the world to use. They're definitely not the easiest things in the world to use for uploading content as an artist, and that's because we've always deliberately tried to make them not easy to use for piracy. Yeah. Like we've never wanted to point to illegal content, we've never wanted to endorse piracy. We didn't want to make it easy for people to create like a seamless content experience um, because we we didn't we, we just wanted to stay away from from piracy completely. Now that we've got two million pieces of legal licensed content out there in the BitTorrent ecosystem, now that we've we've delivered close to 200 million downloads in the last 12 months of legal licensed content from BitTorrent HQ in San Francisco. Now that we're seeing this critical mass of people who want to do this, we're, we're just working as fast as we can to build a product that will let people do this. And you're absolutely right, the, the real value of BitTorrent is, uh, we, we're really excited about the bundle concept, but the real value of BitTorrent is, this completely takes away costs. We've got products in the market like BitTorrent Sync, which is essentially a way to sync computers with unlimited amounts of data between all your different machines that doesn't have any costs, none of the backend costs associated with other storage and syncing services, because there's no cloud, there's just your computers. and Really, that's the value of BitTorrent as a technology. And you know, the way we look at it is, if you look at every disruptive t technology in history, from filmmaking technology, going all the way back to when Edison invented the record player, the most disruptive technologies have always been thought of as kind of things to be fearful of at first. And you know, it's really no surprise that the first ten years of BitTorrent was, oh, this is this is something scary. Actually, it's one of the most valuable technologies we've ever created and we're really excited about the, the new applications of BitTorrent that we're rolling out in the, in the next few years. Yeah. And uh, talking about uh, you know, f switching from the uh, artist and the distributor's perspective to the consumer's perspective, BitTorrent has also um, you know, of course, so we're seeing a drop in numbers of people that are using uh, the P2P technology to uh, pirate, especially music, because there's so many services that are more convenient to, to do that sort of thing if, if you need to find, you know, the, the artists that you love or find music that you want to listen to. And so how do you present BitTorrent now as a front-end solution for consumers to find legal content? And, and uh, what is the best way to curate the content that is out there, uh, as you, you talked, like huge numbers to present to people? Uh, BitTorrent as a, as a discovery platform as well. I don't know that we are seeing a drop in numbers. We're certainly not seeing a drop in numbers. Oh, I meant a, a drop in numbers of, of people that are using P2P for piracy uh, or yeah, for copyright infringement. I'm, I'm not totally convinced that that's true. That, yeah. the, the latest reports I've seen have suggested that the, the entire ecosystem is growing and a smaller percentage of the, the worldwide traffic is right. BitTorrent, but it doesn't suggest that the, the network's actually still growing. Um, and, and whether or not it's all legal or illegal uses is, is really hard to actually ascertain because it's, it's distributed. Yeah. Um, but in terms of you know, what we're doing to try and make things easier for people, it, it really gets back to what we're doing with bundles and sort of releasing tools that are much more than clients for browsing the protocol, but actually content managers for consuming good content. Um, we're doing everything in our power to point people towards good content. Um, we launched an ad network last year, and, and, and really the whole point of that was we want to point our users to good content, and we, we point enough of them to good content that, that people, games companies, software companies, creators of all kinds are actually paying us to point our users towards their content. So th these users are really valuable, and they are, they are mainstream consumers, but it's going, to be, it's going to take us probably the rest of this year before you start to see some more sort of you know consumer friendly very easy to use products because we didn't want to build those until we were sort of sure that the ecosystem was changing and the good news is that it, it, it really really is so yeah, yeah sure and uh, looking at finally uh the way in which uh, fans relate to musicians mm -hmm. uh so what you're trying to build is also a way for musicians to establish a relationship with their fans mm -hmm. because of course the fans need to be hit multiple times and uh, and you know they need to feel like they're comfortable with the artist before they you know usually yeah. part any any money or you know actually buy something from the artist so where do you sit in that in that equation uh, would that be more for the for the uh, initial discovery phase or would it be for sort of a middle ground where the uh, the fan is looking for stuff by the artist mm -hmm. and they find it and they manage to get a, an added value through through the, the bundles or through the torrent that the artist is seeding? You know what's interesting about all the experiments we've done in the last couple of years is 
what we we really saw is that there's not a there's not a business model for digital content. There's not a one size fits all solution that's just going to work for everybody. There's a different business model for every single piece of digital content in the world, and no one understands that better than the artist who created it and their fan base. So the idea of the bundle is we're going to give artists and creators the tools to configure a bundle that suits their business model and if they make the majority of their money on iTunes then the bundle will be a way to market and funnel people back to iTunes or if they make most of their money on YouTube you can funnel people towards YouTube if you want to monetize content directly you can do so in that bundle if you want to grab an email address from somebody and then market to them later and hit them multiple times you'll be able to do that as well our, our point of view, our, our tagline is is options, not rules, and and we sort of look at the way the internet's evolving into a series of walled gardens, where there's you know one business model in this walled garden and one business model here. There's lots of really valuable platforms and stores and and places that add value to content, but we don't believe in a one size fits all solution. That's not that's not the way the internet works, and that's not the way creativity works. So what we're quite trying to create is something that can can really augment the rest of the the existing ecosystem, including including the bits on world, but also all of the great social platforms, streaming services, music stores, video websites, everything else that's out there. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time, Matt, and have a great rest of uh, the conference. Thank you.